What's up, everyone? I hope you guys are having an amazing day. Today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to play Kashira properly in Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel. Big shout out to Sam, because I stole his office. Spare change. Spare change, ma'am. It's mine now. Let's get straight into this video. A lot of people are playing Kashira incorrectly, so I wanna show you guys how. Kashira is not how it's played in the TCG. It's not how it's played when it was full power. You're literally missing half the deck. You have to play it super control. I'll show you guys exactly how to do that right now. Let's get into the video. Let's go. Before we get into the video, make sure to smash the subscribe button, smash the like button. Check out triffgaming.com to get the best play mats in the game. Also, because Sam's the GOAT, check out tsx1.com because that's my man's. All right, let's get into the best way to play Kashira in the planet. Let's go. Pay close attention. I'm going to teach you in this video literally everything you need to know about this deck. Look at this list. It's different than how you need to play it normally. Hear me out. There's a lot of tricks in here. You need to know. You need to know these. For starters, there's not many actual Kashiras. So you need to play it totally differently. By playing the maxed out ways to Kashira currently, it's not enough. So you need to do the defensive cards you need to play. You need to stop your opponent, but to be somewhat offensive. You need to max out on all the pots. This is not debatable. Three pots and one pot of prosperity and one desire, three desires. You need to. You literally need to do it because there's just not enough Kashiras. You need to see these Kashiras. Even if you open two pots, it doesn't matter. You need to see them or else you can't play. Next, you need to play level three hand traps. The reason why is it helps you make a free Baron. Now imagine this scenario where all you have is Unicorn. You don't have Kashtiosis. You need to get an actual interruption up there. And because they're all level sevens, the idea behind it is you start off with Unicorn, Unicorn Search Birth, Normal Mourner or Mournal Ash or Normal Ash, make Baron, then Birth, bring back the Unicorn, and then you're fine. So it's vital to kind of play it around Baron if possible. And look how many defensive cards you play. Defensive cards are what win you the game in this deck. You have three, six, nine, 12, 15 hand traps. You have 15 hand traps plus you have three talents and two called by the grave as defensive cards. So it's five extra defensive cards. That's 20 in total. And by playing, by relying on birth and preparations as the follow-up, make sure to always have follow-ups in hand and kind of play this deck like gadgets. Play it in the sense where it's like yellow gadget, green gadget as the Kashtiras. They get free plus each turn and then you win through that. And they're high attack and difficult to deal with. So if your opponent, let's say Veilers or Ashes of Fenrir effect, you still have the other Kashtiras. So that's very vital to keep that in mind and you play it very slowly. That's how you play this deck correctly. You won't always be able to correctly Diablosis them, but the scenario where you open absolutely busted, you could Diablosis. But play this as a control deck. Don't play a bunch of level 7 extenders. Play as a control deck and win through your defensive cards. The pots, like, they need to ash this or lose. And the, your actual play could go through. That's how to play this correctly. Make sure to utilize each of these. I'm going to go through each of the cards, card for card, in case you guys don't know the names. This is Maxi, Ash Blossom, Ghost Mourner, Kushtira Rise Heart, Kushtira Fenrir, Kushtira Unicorn, Kushtira Ogre, Nibiru, Desires, Talents, a triple tactic talent, Pot of Prosperity, Kushtira Birth, Call by the Grave, Impermanence, Kushtira Preparations. Just by spending about five to six K gems, you should be able to get a majority of these on the new pack. And the rest you should have by now. Uh, one Baron, you, you also, if any, don't play around with, you need to play four pots. You need to play all the Kushtiras like maxed out. The other defensive cards, let's say you don't have all the hand traps, Play other defensive. You can play enemy controller. I think that's a common. There's like a budget alternative. Uh, Book of Moon is crazy against Kashtira. I think it's, yeah, it's a rare. You can play Book of Moon. You can play enemy controller. These cards are, are budget alternatives to some of these cards. And they're very powerful as well. If you don't want to, let's say, get a Nibiru or get an Imperm or get a Call by or whatever, or a Ghost Mourner, you could play those. Ghost Ogre is all right, I guess, but it's not as powerful as the rest. One Big Eye, one Draco Sack, two Red Eyes Flare Metal, two Diablosis, Dark Arm Dragon is crazy good. So I like two of them in case one of them's gone. But you could play one if you like. Because keep in mind, they could look into your deck. Uh, one, this. This card, Infinite Track Mountain Smashers, actually helps you make a four material Zeus. So going second, you essentially use this card to attack, take their card, and make four material Zeus. Play two Shangri-La. You need it. And one Wind Charmer, one Alsa. This is because your Fenrir can take the opponent's Fenrir. Your Unicorn can take the opponent's Unicorn. And you're able to play properly with this. You can play Dimension Shifter if you like as well. This card's literally ridiculously powerful. So this is another scenario, but I, in a format where you don't know if it's good or not, I'm like, eh, so many shitter decks. A lot of people will be playing Kashtira, so I don't know the power of this. I prefer all my cards be useful against Kashtira. That is the deck list and all the specifics. Let's go straight into a duel. We are going second in this duel, and this is exactly what I'm talking about. You play this deck like gadgets, you're going to win. You have three extremely powerful hand traps. You have Fenrir to be able to search follow-up. You have Prosperity, Prosperity is searching any Kashtira you want. Anything, I hope he's playing a good deck. He's playing a garbage deck. Okay, but this deck, if it goes uh, 
like unstopped is pretty crazy uh, this card says if a vernus left monster special summon you could target one monster field or graveyard add it to the hand uh ash and maxi are crazy against this deck uh i hope he has one i think i might even let him uh let's read what this one does specifically you can discard this card and one monster and add a earth fairy i mean this is gonna get fucking destroyed to ash blossom holy shit uh so yeah anything he does he, he's just cooked it's two coins in hand <laughs> like bro, now imagine it's my turn special fenrir fenrir effect get unicorn as follow-up what's this one do this card this card add one then you get special on earth yeah that's a good time to maxi <laughs> Yeah, this is like, dude, this is so good. Like, Kashira cards with defensive cards are almost unstoppable. He, let's say he's playing a real deck. No deck is playing through Maxi Ash Mourner. Unless you're playing Pendulum, no cap. Pendulum could play through it. But then you just have Fenrir and Prosperity. It's so broken. Like, this is actually insane. Now, I'm going to do a Fenrir. So, I might just Fenrir normal Mourner, get Baron, Fenrir search, Fenrir follow up. Unicorn is the best one to have by a landslide because Unicorn gets birth, and birth is what you really want. Birth ensures that the entire duel, you have a great follow-up. Same with the preparation. You want to set up birth and preparation ASAP and then protect them with all your Kashtiras. Uh, target face the card you're playing up to the number of earth monsters you control with different other person from the graveyard. Return earth monsters you control to the hand. And if you do, return the card cards to the hand. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, sir. Bounce my Kashtira Fenrir back to my hand. It's literally, I can summon as many times as I want. Ah, let's go. Damn, this deck's nice, bro. Uh, so... Didn't this special summon? Or it is like, then you can. Oh, so he's opting not to even special. Dude. Pretty sure he's forced to special. Well, he doesn't need to special, but like, if you just leave on this, you you die. So I don't think that's a good play. Yeah, okay, there we go. That's what I thought. So this card says you could tribute this normal summon set card. It was not normal summon. So you can't even use this effect. You control this. Well, you can place this card on top of your deck. Okay, so he's trying to bounce this back with his trap, I assume. Talents. Like, dude, you see what I mean now? Like, and it's not just hand, like you play 15 hand traps, right? But now, let's say you stop your opponent with 15 hand traps. All right. But you also have cards that need to be stopped as talents, called by the grave, pot of prosperity, pot of desires, impermanence. These are cards going second now that needs to be stopped to stop the opponent. And it's good, okay to have double Kashtiras like this. Totally okay. Because what this ensures now is that the follow-up is going to be insane. I'm going to special Fenrir. Freely, I'm going to special Fenrir. Freely. What are you going to do? Bounce it? I'm literally just going to special it back, bro. <laughs> Effect. You can search Rise Heart as well, but like the level four. The, but don't focus on the rank plays. Focus on follow-up. I'm going to search Unicorn. I'm going to Prosperity now in case I hard search, get a birth. And then I'm just going to enter Battle Phase. Like, always for six you don't need any of these you'd never use your extra deck ever literally ever four whatever like they're all irrelevant five six they're all irrelevant you never use any of them prosperity let's see if we get a birth if we get a birth we continue if not we're just gonna get a follow-up like an interruption card i'm not gonna go for rise i'm not gonna go for any of these plays this card if you guys read it it says during the birth turn you get special a kishtira that is banished or in your hand so this would allow us to special, but Ash is so deadly against his deck that I'd rather just get it Ash. This is how you play the deck. Very slow. It is slow, okay? There's no doubt about it. It's a slow deck, but that's how you have to play it. That's how to probably play, it, especially in this format. Now look, enter battle. Attack. Effect. Banish the field spell. There's nothing you can do. It, that's how you like, control, control the game. You have Ash, Mourner, Talents. Those three are going to put in serious work. A Fenrir that he must deal with. And then next turn, if he doesn't deal with the Fenrir, I summon out Unicorn and he's fucked. What's this going to... Look at this. This is going to do nothing right here. Look at this. This will accomplish nothing for my, for my friend here. Look at, look at look at how this chain is going to resolve here. Look at this. He's out of cards. All right. Thanks, bro. All right. Anyways, special Unicorn. Use Unicorn to get birth. <laughs> This deck's crazy. Oh, fuck, get Unicorn. Look at this. Unicorn, get birth. Birth. Fuck. Now we can normal summon. Let's see how we want to do this. Um, I kind of want to get a Baron up. Baron, like, literally secures the game. But this is more fun. This is much more fun. We're going to save the double hand trap in hand. We're going to use the effect of Ogre. We're going to use this to get the trap. 
Trop says, during this you get special one of Christian Monster's Banisher in your hand. Birth, you get special uh, from your grave or banished. Next, we get special. He's still at 8,000. I think the play here is to go Shangri-La. We can go into Diablos, the, the Mind Hacker. Doesn't really matter much. Let's go into this. We're going to put this at the very top. Special. We're going to use this to special a Fenrir. Uh, from our deck and then we're going to pass there we could use preparation to special fenrir as well if we like freely but on the standby phase we're going to trigger shangri-la effect effect bring up uh fenrir and that's just game like there's just no answer you could do birth and preparation will summon every single turn and there's just not enough that he could do that's a little background of how to play kishtira this is a combination of just playing correctly the same thing would go for every single meta deck. The idea is just maintain control. That's how you properly play it. And your defensive cards will win you the game. Don't worry about the extra deck. I literally should have, I could have kept Unicorn. Like if I kept Unicorn and uh, Ogre on the field, he also can't deal with that. Just keep them on the field. They're actually nuts. That's a video. If you guys enjoy it, this is the most extensive guide I could think of. It's a very easy to deck. Very easy deck to play. Very, very easy. Recommended for all new players. Incredibly easy to play. Summon one or two Kishtira, relax, don't summon over five times, you don't need to. Win with your hand traps, win with your defensive cards. Let the defensive cards that are broken, that are in everyone's deck, like at 70%, plus, 50% plus, let them do the work. Let all of them do the work, and you just win. That's the idea behind the deck. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you got this far, make sure to smash the subscribe button, smash the like button. Check out TripGaming.com, check out TSX1.com as well, shout out Sam. And if you guys want to see more videos like this, let me know in the comments. I do want to do a Kishtira versus Draco Slayer match. Just to show you guys how good Draco Slayers are this format. And if you guys want to see more Master Joe content, let me know. I love you guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace!